you know, considering that he doesn't have a proper um, way to block, right? He, ha he has only two um, units. But if he blocks, I mean, maybe, right? If, if he has a buff. Hello everyone, I'm Genie, and today you're gonna be seeing me with glasses because for some reason I woke up and uh, I guess I didn't woke up like that. I didn't wake up like that, but my eye kind of, you know, screwed up. So I don't know if you can see it, but I have a freaking Sharingan. gun. Like, god damn, it's so freaking red. Like, I don't know right now, but today earlier it was so red. I think my, I think it, like a vein would have popped. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, it was extremely red. You can, you can call me like Uchiha Genie. Like. <laughs> Freaking goddamn so red. Oh god. So alright, without the rumbling, right? Let's talk about what we are going to see today. We're going to see Nocturne doing the work, right? With Callista. Like both of them are extremely important in this deck, to be honest with you. Like, because we are playing not only a Nightfall deck, but we are playing as well um uh, Mist Wraith, like with um Wraith Caller being the strongest um opponent, so you know, unit that we have, so follow it, right? So Callista is gonna be getting um you know the strongest dead ally follower, so it's gonna be quite crazy as you guys are going to see a lot of Wraith and it's not very weird to see these guys as you know 6-2 guys for instance like it's very bonkers this is actually very good because you can generate a very powerful unit like because it's gonna be buffed you know for four mana like in burst speed like it's actually very legit legit good and as a splash, like for Targon, we have, you know, Lunari Duskbringer, because Dusk Petal Dusk, Dusk Petal Dust is actually a very important card. I don't really think you can be doing a very, um, you know, useful Nightfall deck without these card, this card. And I think that Lunari Shade Stalker, even though I didn't use it because I didn't draw it, um, it's a very solid card as well for this deck because you need to be attacking with your Nightfall um, allies in order to level up Nocturne. And one important thing to note is that you only need to attack with them. So the Nightfall doesn't need to be procced, it just needs to be a unit with night stock, with um, Nightfall um, written on it, right? So this is a very important thing to have in mind. We have Fading Memories here because, you know, you will be getting either more units with Nightfall, right? You're gonna be getting, um, you know, more Mist Wraiths, you're gonna be getting more Wraith Callers, you can get something from your opponent, you're gonna be, you know, activating cards with Nightfall that you have for zero mana. You know, it kind of depletes your card, yes, your card um, hand, right? But you still have um, Glimpse Beyond, you still have, you know, some things to kind of keep you going. You need to use your resources um, mindfully, right? But if you do that, you are gonna be having a healthy hand. Um, I, it's, there's one thing that I need to say though, um, this deck kind of suffers if you're going against a support heavy Lulu Demacia deck. That deck is actually tilting me quite badly, I need to build a counter towards it because everyone's playing that thing and it's kind of obnoxious, I'm not gonna lie to you, like Lulu levels up so goddamn easily that, you know, it's, it feels like no, the old um, aggro burn, right? It's that powerful. So you need to have, you know, control decks um, to deal with that. So considering that no one is playing a control decks, a very heavy control decks right now, that deck is actually being very prevalent. Another very good, you know, card drawing mechanic that we have is Stalking Shadows. You There's the possibility that you get another Wraith Caller, there's the possibility that you got another Mist, call, Mist Wraith. You know, everything synergizes very well in this deck, so this is something that is worth keeping in mind. You just need to play your cards, you know, in, a, in, in the right order and uh, doing the right thing and you're gonna be successful with it. So yeah, this is gonna be it for the intro, fellas. Let's go for the games. Subscribe for the channel if you would like to see more content like this one. 
a lot more content of me, myself, Ginny, that is extremely tired today, but still managed to record a freaking video, because goddamn, I said I would, so I will, every day, every single day. Comment as well with your thoughts on the video, right, with, um, on the meta, on the expansion, I see that there are some people unhappy about it, I'm not some happy, I'm not so happy about some things as well, but the, the game is fun to play, um, there are a lot of things that I can experiment with, and this actually makes me very happy, right, even though I, even though I don't like everything they did. But still, it's it's a pretty fun. Um, it, the game is a pretty fun situation right now. Like the video as well. If you did like the video, if you didn't like the video, don't like the video. There is no point. Also, by the way, as a last thing, we have a Discord channel. Very fun people there. A lot of fun people there. Surprisingly fun people there. Very friendly as well. Like God damn. Like I don't have anything bad to say about my Discord channel. And I'm not really being biased, believe me or not. So yeah, fellas, let's go for the games. See ya! Right? Alright, so here we are going against a very greedy deck, right? If we can set the pace early on, we are probably gonna win this. But we need to do that first, right? Easier said than done. Alright, so I have some. I have quite good um, hand here. I don't really think that I need to be removing anything. Okay, don't have a one drop, but that's fine. Like, I have um, two Mist Wraiths, which is actually very, very nice. I have a three drop now, which is very nice indeed. I'm gonna be able to use it with um, Shroud of Darkness, which is very cool. He's probably not gonna be playing anything, because as far as I can remember, this deck doesn't really play um, anything on turn two. Turn three, it doesn't play anything as well. Now, I have the option to go for Fading Memories, but, but I think that this is actually better. Because I'm going to be enabling her and uh, giving her some damage as well. Okay, so here I have the Scourge. Um, I think Living Legends is actually better. I'm not feeling any of these two cards. I think Living Legends is better. It's going to be giving me more um, variety later on. At least it's a solid 7 turn play, right? I'm going to be pressuring him quite a lot here. Following turn I can play another Lunaria Priestess if I want to, which is actually very nice. Sad part is that he got healing, right? So he's probably gonna be, heal be, be using a ramp card right now, like... Um, or he's gonna be getting, um, you know, some more Celestial cards, so this is... Yeah, Catalyst of Aeons as expected. Okay. Alright, let's see what we're gonna get here. Wraith Caller, phenomenal. That's actually very nice. On the following turn, I'm gonna be going for a very, very oppressive um, line of play. Reading Stones, he's going extremely um, passive mode. Okay. Alright. I'm probably gonna be going for Fading Memories onto Wraith Caller on the following turn. Or, rather on to Nocturne, I guess. Because I can kill... I can kill that, right? Which is very nice. I need to be trying to negate... Um, you know, his ramp. The better, the best I can. Which is actually very difficult to do. But at least, um, his line of plays kind of shows me that he doesn't have, um, Trundle in hand. Which is pretty good. Which is a way that he, you know, manages to stabilize the board. Is by playing Trundle. But I need to go very aggro mode here. here? Okay, he has something a little bit more annoying though. Than that. Okay, I'm gonna be attacking with all of them. Right here, I'm gonna be dealing quite a bit of damage. He's gonna be healing for three though. So yeah, alright, he's not even gonna, okay, alright, so he drew, um, he's gonna be at 10 health on the following turn, he's never attacking with that, ever, um, okay, so he's healing even more, alright, another Avarosian Sentry, that's fine. As it stands, uh, I'm not really being pressured here. Which is nice, but I'm not really in a good position as well, which is not nice. Okay. 
Right, that's a little bit ridiculous. Um, right here, I guess I need to go for Wraith Caller. I'm gonna have to sacrifice my Nocturne onto that as well, maybe. If I sacrifice my Nocturne, I'm gonna be in such a bad position. However, going for a Rising Mist here actually looks pretty legit. Actually, it looks pretty legit. And I kind of have to, like, there is a possibility that he would pass, right? So I kind of need to go for this. Right now. Alright. Okay, so I need to remove that. That much is certain. So I'm going to be going like this. On the following turn, I'm probably going to be going for um, Wraith Caller before attacking. I'll be draining one from you, because he's going to be healing on this um, turn, so there's nothing I can do about that. Right? Okay, that's pretty good, that's pretty nice. Pretty nice to have, it's a pretty nice one. I'm not going to be able to play it on the following turn though. It's not like you would make that big of a difference. And I think... I can level Nocturne up if I attack with both of them on the following turn, which is actually very nice. I'm gonna be dealing quite a lot of quite a bit of damage. It's not gonna be enough to kill him though. Because he you know he's healing, so that's a little bit troublesome. But overall, I think going for an open attack here is the play to go for. You know, considering that he doesn't have a proper um, way to block. Right, he has only two um, units. But if he blocks, I mean, maybe, right? If he has a buff, or if he has a um, hush, for instance. Nice, he doesn't have it. Okay. Nocturne, fellas. He, he does the work. He does the work. Quite a nice card. I like him a lot. Okay, so we're going against Lulu and uh, Demacia. All right. Guess I'm keeping um, Rise and Mists. I need early answers though. Um, fading Memories is not gonna do anything for me. I'm gonna keep Callista. Okay, so that's a little bit ridiculous, but okay. Now here, I'm actually gonna play because I need to level up Nocturne, right? Alright, he doesn't have a turn 1 play, which is surprising, um, considering the deck that he's running. Alright. Nice, okay. I mean, I have way too many Callistas, which is obnoxious, but I guess that's okay. Alright, but... Um, okay, I guess. Okay, like, why? What is this hand? Um, I'm gonna attack with both of them. Like, if he wants to kill Callista, so be it. I have several more in hand. I'm actually more um, preoccupied on to leveling up Nocturne and then anything else, to be honest with you. Alright. Apparently, he doesn't have Lulu as well. Never mind. Um, never mind. No, I guess he's gonna have to make a choice. He can't save both of them, so. I'll be giving her vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be giving her. Uh, I'll be giving her a vulnerable. Right. This is pretty nice. This looks pretty good. He's gonna be buffing only for one. Um, if she wants, if he wants, right, he can um, actually save his war chef and deal some damage to me. But he's gonna be losing Lulu in the process. So I figured he would not want to do that. I'm gonna be going for Callista here. And then I'm going for a Lunary Shadewalker. Probably. Maybe, right? Or. I should maybe actually I should maybe do it differently. I 
should maybe do it differently. I kind of need to go for the Callista Spear or the Nocturne Unspeakable. I'm going for a Callista Spear though. I'm gonna be killing this guy. Not gonna but no. do I attack with you? I mean it's a solid blocker, but at the same token, if I start blocking and blocking, I'm gonna be losing the game. I need to go for the attacks. Alright, so This is so obnoxious. Uh, I'm gonna be killing Lulu though. I'm gonna be killing Lulu with um, Black Spear. Okay. I have another Nocturne, which is nice. I need to kill this guy. Like, I have to. If I don't kill Lulu, I lose the game. Okay. Alright, so far, so good. So far, so good, guys. I can play this unit, which is a very, very solid blocker. I'm gonna be losing quite a lot of HP, though, in this mat in this um, scenario, but I think I'm gonna be fine overall. I can play this. <clears throat> Alright. Gonna be taking the damage here, I guess. There's no point in blocking. Maybe I do block here, though. It doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel very good at all. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing this. So in this position, I think I'm, I should go for a Lunary Shade Walker here. And kind of bank the mana. And rip the um, benefit from... From dropping him on the following turn, right? With um, probably Stalking Shadows is probably better. If I play him with this, I can play both Wraith Caller and Nocturne. So I guess I'm doing that. Okay. I'm gonna be doing it on this one, so I can... Because um, you see, I have a lot of fearsome units, right? So these are probably not even gonna block. I'm gonna go for a Wraith Caller, because I need to pressure him and try to finish the game off. If I lose, I lose. Um, plain and simple. He's have he, he will have to drop something here, otherwise he loses the game. That's pretty much how this is gonna go. That's pretty much how this is going. Unless he has several buffs in hand, which, um, considering he is playing Demacia and Ionia, it's not unlikely, right? Really, that's interesting. That's very interesting indeed. We'll be going for this. That's very awkward, I mean, he, he needs to have some um, a buff of some sort, otherwise he loses, like, there's nothing he can do about it. But he has four cards, not having a buff is actually um, awkward, very weird. I would be surprised if he didn't have a repost or, or anything like that. I really would be surprised. But he doesn't have it, nice. So it's probably the first game that I'm winning against Lulu with this deck. But yeah, nice, good game. Good game indeed. I made some alterations, right? But yeah, good game overall. Okay, so this card, is it... I mean, it... Is it the standard type of discard? I'm gonna be keeping all this because this is looking like a very nice curve. Even though I may not be playing it in a curve, but it, it looks pretty nice at least. Right? I mean, I'm probably gonna play this in a curve, to be honest with you. I can play this on 2, this on 3, and uh, I can play Nocturne on 4 um, with the help of Dusk, um, Dusk Battle. Okay, it's gonna be this one. Odds are he's not even gonna attack, because I have um, a better block than his attack is. I'm blocking him there, no problem at all. Okay, whatever. Don't care much. 
Like, you wasted vision on two units, so... I'm actually fine with that. Actually fine with that. But that being the case, I'm gonna be dropping Callista so I can rip the benefit of this unit dying. And honestly, I'm not even gonna attack, I guess. I'm gonna be taking three from Draven, but... It's not like attacking, it's not even gonna help me with uh, Nocturne, right? It's not even gonna help me with Nocturne. I can play Nocturne on this turn to, you know, de um, decrease um, the effectiveness of his play. And screw up with uh, Draven a little bit, killing Draven with a Doom Beast on the following turn. That's probably what I'm going to do. And this maybe will. Um, make him feel awkward about attacking with the raven, but that's probably not gonna be the case. It's most likely not gonna be the case and he's gonna attack regardless, I guess. But I have some very solid blockers and I'm actually gonna use them. Because he's playing an aggro deck, right? And so am I, so what I need to do is survive and... Uh, I think this is the best way to do it. I'll be playing Stalking Shadows. Good news, I'm gonna be getting um, my health back from Doom Beast on this following turn, which is very nice. And I'm actually gonna be killing his Draven with it as well, which is even better. I need to go for this though. Nice, okay. So I think Lunary Duskbringer is better than Doom Beast. Because it's a good way to activate my my nightfall right which is awesome which is very good indeed gonna be getting doom beast i guess yeah i guess this is better i maybe i could you know but still um this is a nocturne i'm kind of thinking that this will die i think it's very it would be very odd if this would not die so because i'm actually gonna be attacking with everything here if he wants to kill them, he's gonna have to waste his buffs. Because considering that he has spinning axes, right? I need to be working towards the level up onto Nocturne. Really? So you decided not to buff it? That's interesting. That's very interesting. That is very interesting indeed. Maybe he has um, another way to kill them that I'm not seeing. Like uh, Mystic Shot or something. Because, you know, using the spinning axis to buff this one and then drag it onto a block was a solid way to solving his problem. But yeah, he has a, another way to do it. Funny enough, he's trying to preserve Draven, which is actually weird. Because Draven has vulnerable, so he's gonna die regardless. It doesn't really matter what you do about it. Okay, so he's trying to pressure me onto winning the game um, right there and then. Right then and there. Yeah, something like that. I need to go for another one of these, I guess. He's just gonna pull this one if I drop it, right? Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe this is the one, because maybe he pulls there, and I can kill that with um, Unspeakable Horror. Like, pulling this, um, pulling the Lunari Duskbringer onto the Flame Chompers actually means that the Flame Chompers has one damage. Really, you're gonna do it like that. I don't really agree with it. Yeah, as I, as I, as I said, okay? So I'm gonna be blocking like this, right? And I'm actually not gonna block anything else. I'm gonna be taking a little bit of damage, but this guy is going down. Which is phenomenal, right? Which is fantastic. Alright. Callista is leveled up, which is very, very nice as well. I'm gonna be getting, I guess, a 3-2 um, out of it. Which, I mean, is not fantastic, but it's gonna force him to block on the following turns. Which is actually very neat. Um, Dusk Petal and... Um, 
Dusk Petal Dust. That's a hard name to pronounce. Um, it's gonna help me to use uh, this following card that I got, right? Which is pretty neat. Alright, another horror. Okay. I'm gonna be doing this. I'm gonna be going for um, the Invoke to see if I can get something that will help me here. I'm not gonna have mana to play this. I would like to. I really would like to. So in this scenario, I guess I go all in with uh, the Overwhelm. I think that's the proper way to do it. Alright. Try to draw a card then, to see if I can do this better. He has only two cards in hand. So me drawing here is actually threatening for him. Nice. That's actually very good. That is actually very, very good. I guess I'll be playing this. But I can kill Draven if I want to. And I guess I do want to kill Draven. I can play these two, right? And Unspeakable Horror. But if I go for Wraithcaller, I'm killing him on this turn pretty much for sure. It's risky. It's risky. I'm gonna I'm gonna go the safe route, I guess. Like I don't know what that card is. If you, that if it's anything that deals damage, I lose the game. If I don't play it safe. If I don't play it safe. But I guess I'm gonna try to go for the kill here. It's risky though. Oh my god. I'm gonna go for this. And I still have mana for unspeakable horror to maybe kill something if I so desire. I'm gonna be doing it like this, right? And I'm gonna try to kill him with um, unspeakable horror in case something goes very wrong. I'm gonna do it like this. And it should be enough to kill him. But I mean, he's gonna be killing um, Nocturne with um, the Spinning Axe. That is happening 100%. That is happening 100%. There's not much I can do about that though. Right, Spinning Axe there. Or something. You're killing Nocturne, there's no way you don't. You still lose if you if you do it like that. That needs to be a damaging card. Like to kill this guy, it has to be. It has to be. But if it is, I guess I'm on the upper hand here, because I can go for unspeakable horror, kill Draven. He will have only two spinning axes on hand. Okay. All right. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I don't have enough mana to deal with that, but I guess I'm fine. I'm gonna be doing this then. Okay, so I have the upper hand, I'm probably gonna win then. If this is gonna be his play, I'm probably gonna win. Odds of me losing right now is very, very low. Very, very low indeed. Alright. Because as it stands, he has only um, two spinning axes. He needs to draw Jinx, otherwise he loses the game. And even if he draws Jinx, if he draws Jinx, I'm, I'm actually a little bit screwed, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. It would be actually a little bit difficult. I guess I'm going for a Wraith Caller here. To generate another blocker. Right? So now it's very, very weird to lose the game. I'm gonna be going for a Nocturne. Probably a naked one, I guess. Yeah, this should do it. This should do it. I can block, dude. I can block, no problem. Like this, I guess. 
Yeah, this should do it. Pretty sure. All right. I'm gonna play it safe. Um, the odds of him having something that kills me here is actually very, very slow. Very, very, very low. Yeah. Even if he levels up Jinx, he's gonna be killing one of my units and leaving himself kind of naked, right, without anything to do about it. So yeah, that was a one game because of that. That was a one game because of that. Okay, so Karma and Elise. That's weird. I guess I've never seen it. I don't know why he would play Karma and Elise. I'm gonna stick with a Wraith Caller, considering that I have um, Rise and Mists. I shouldn't be keeping um, Unspeakable Horrors, though. Like, it's not gonna do anything for me. Okay, so um, I have a very Wraith-heavy hand. Indeed. Alright. I'm gonna be playing it. Following turn, I'm gonna be playing another one. He's probably going to attack thinking I can't block it. Little he knows. Little he knows, fellas. He's going to attack me. 100% sure about that. Yes. Okay. So get another one at burst speed. Block here. Block here. I'm going to be going for Wraith Caller on the following turn. Um, instead of Nocturne. Alright. You have another one? No matter. No matter. I'm gonna go for a Wraith Caller here. To try and apply as much pressure to him as I can. Oh, you have one of your own. Okay. Interesting. You're gonna be going for a full on attack here. He can probably block only this one if he wants to, or he's gonna be sacrificing his Wraith Caller onto one of my Wraiths. Okay, that's interesting. I don't mind that at all. I'm gonna be dealing 8 damage to him, which is quite nice. Quite nice indeed. It's pretty good. That's a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Alright, so here, I guess I'm going for Callista so I can rip the benefits off my units dying. I can also play um, another blocker if I want to, but he got, sp he got 5 mana. So that kind of worries me. Alright, he doesn't have it anymore. Unless he got another Vile Fist. But I think even if that's the case, he's probably not going to use it. Um, I, if, I, if I pass now, on the following turn, I'm going to have 8. Alright, even if I play this, I'm still going to have mana to go for a miss. Wait, mi won't I? Like, I need 4. Yeah, I kind of can't do it right now. I'm going to be playing um, Rising Mists onto Nocturne on the following turn. And I'm going to be killing Elise because as it's looking, this deck really is looking like a very spider heavy deck, like a deck that relies on Elise leveling up so that he can win the game. For that reason, I'm going to go for another Wraith Caller, I guess. I'll be going for a Nocturne onto Elise so I can kill her. Alright. Good news, he can't block any of these unless he kind of, you know, get a lot of wraiths. Alright. So I'm going to be doing it like this, I guess. Here. And I'm actually going to be killing you, I guess. Because he's going to be blocking with Karma 100%. I would not like to be losing my Nocturne. So I'm going to be doing this. I mean, Karma is something that is going to... I mean, oh, okay. So you do have... Interesting. That's very interesting. So you have a Rekindler in this deck. Okay. Alright, so he's going to be resurrecting Karma. Which is very interesting. He has very, very low health, though. So I'm almost killing him. I'm almost killing him. 
I could have tried to set up lethal um, this turn, right, by going for a full-on attack. But I don't know if that would be very useful. Yeah, Rekindler, as I thought, because he telegraphs. He's telegraphing quite a lot what he's doing there. Gonna be doing this. Buffing my Wraiths. Gonna be playing a Doom Beast, so I kinda get him closer and closer to dying. Alright. And I'm actually attacking right now. Like, straight up. Maybe he got an answer, but I mean, it, he, he needs a very good answer here because he needs to block these, right? All right, you're still dead. You're still dead. You need to block with these two as well, and you need to have an answer for um, the one that will last. That will be last. Okay, so you do have a way to kill Nocturne, which is interesting. You have Grasp of the Undying or something like that. Withering. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay. I mean, if that's your only play, I still win. I guess I do win regardless because I'm gonna be getting um, draining health with um, Doom Beast, right? So I don't really mind that. Kind of doubt he has a play here for three mana that saves him. Yeah, he doesn't. So, good game in the end. Right? Yeah. Alright. Good game, fellas. Good game. He played a very greedy deck as well, though. So, yeah. Very greedy indeed. Good game. Good game.